praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I am so happy to be here once more and to bring to us the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today is July 11th, uh, 2023, and I bless God for the gift of life. Amen. On 7-7, that's July 7th, uh, 2023, I celebrated my birthday and I thank God that the, the brethren celebrated me. I received a huge amount of love from many of you and I want to bless God for you and I took my time to respond to all the messages I received on, on social media and uh, the ones that were sent to me in person. I bless God for you. Something happened um, that on the 8th of July I observed a quiet time with the Lord and uh, for those of you that I responded um, after after the I think on the 10th I just want to apologize because I, I, I took that time out to appreciate God for all he has done and he will still do you know when I look back from how it all started all I can just do is to appreciate him you know I call him my shepherd of future and that what other way to celebrate uh, a new year in one's life if not giving glory to God one promise I made to God is whenever he gives me a victory I will return the trophy to him and uh, I thought it twice returning that trophy to God and spending a quality time my I didn't even see my family I just had to go to the basement and uh, thank God for my beautiful lovely uh, amazing wife ever supportive wife I thank God that uh, I'm in this journey with such a woman of God, such a virtuous woman. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, my sweetheart. Thank you, my children, biologically and not. God bless you all. So today, I'll be speaking on a very important message, the power of the spoken word. I'll be speaking on the message, the power of the spoken word, and I pray that um, this message, a lot of you on TikTok, most importantly, we'll be able to see the full um, message, we'll be able to listen to the full message. But in case, um, due to time, you weren't able, please, you can um, go to My Neighbor, My Hero um, Facebook page or Instagram. We'll be uploading it there or our YouTube channel, um, Church Online, to listen to this message. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. So, I'll be speaking on the power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. But before I do so, I just want to return the glory to God. Father, we thank you for, for today and we bless you uh, for the listeners who are in tune to hear your word, the undiluted word of the Lord. I pray, Lord, that wherever they are, that you will locate them. Even those of them residing in places without a zip code or postal code, I pray, Father, locate their locations right now in the name of Jesus. Meet them at the point of their needs. I know our faces are different, so problems, situations, challenges are different. But let the entrance of your word bring peace, peace that passes all understanding in the precious name of Jesus. And the church says, Amen. Hallelujah. I love Jesus. So, you know, <clears throat> Sometimes we don't understand that we are gods. We are demigods and things we say is very important. Uh, the Bible made us to understand in 11, uh, Mark 11, chapter, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, that possession is by confession. That whatever you ask God and believe in your heart, that it is done. So it means in the in its simplest term that possession is by confession. Whatever you you want to possess you have to confess it so that made us to know the power of the tongue the power of the tongue a lot of people are uh, have put themselves in huge bondage not knowing that they are the, their own biggest enemy they have spoken failure into their life they have spoken 
premature death into their life. You know, there's this saying I, I, I heard sometime a pastor was saying that the Bible says life is too short. And I was like, I, I was believing that word because he said the Bible, the scripture said life is too short. As a young, as a teenager, I believed it until I was able to, you know, search the scriptures. And I couldn't find such place in the Bible. Rather, what Jesus said is occupy till I come. And God said, you know, occupy, replenish and subdue. So there was nothing too short. Then Jesus re-echoed what he said in the beginning. He said, occupy till I come. So what makes it too short? And that narrative that life is too short has really destroyed a lot of people, have made a lot of people, you know, to spoken premature death into their life, into their finances, into their marriages. And I just want to correct that impression. It is nowhere in the Bible. It's a quotation from the pit of hell. And it may sound so sweet in the mouth and uh, that a lot of us tend to use it. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 15, when you read from verse 17 to 19, but I'm going to summarize it. It says, what you eat will not kill you. What you receive, what people say about you will not kill you. It will not destroy you. But what comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your mouth, because things you speak, comes from the belly and the belly is is the resident of good things so when you speak you speak from your innermost being from your soul from your spiritual being from where from where the holy spirit resides which is your temple and you vomit it so that thing you speak is what kills you so when you say life is too short you are definitely condemning yourself you know so a lot of us have spoken backwardness to ourselves we have some who say i just i want to die i have had people say i'm tired of this world i want to die you know and I, I, I and it hurts me when i see people you know they they make like permanent decision a permanent decision that will destroy them in a seasonal difficulties they are passing through a season in their life and in that season, they make a permanent decision. So we just commit suicide. It's a season. There is a season for hardship. There is a season for you to have miscarriage. There is a season for you to cry. There is a season. But the Bible says, above all this, joy comes in the morning. The day you found peace is the day is your morning. And that's when joy comes. So do not make a permanent decision in a seasonal situation. In a seasonal setback, don't make it. Oh, that doctor's report is so bad. Don't make that permanent decision that will hurt you. Because you are gods. God, make, God made Moses a god over Israel's. Israel's. God said, hey, Moses, I'm tired of you calling me. I've given you the staff. I've given you the authority over these people. You are now a god. That was why when Moses died, nobody knew how Moses died. Because Moses was a god. And, and I haven't seen how a God is being killed. I haven't seen how a God died. So none of us can account how Moses died. None of us can account how Moses, where Moses was buried. But what we, we can tell you is that devil was after the body of Moses, after Moses died, because devil knew that Moses was a God. God professed it. God confessed Moses to be a god. So devil needed Moses to use Moses' face and resemblance to deceive the elect. But what happened? The angel took Moses. So whatever Moses said came to pass. Even the one he said in anger got him into trouble. So brethren, be careful what you say. It is very important. I have seen some people in Africa, my own part of the world, they will say, oh, uh, we are suffering this and they make this permanent decision. Oh, we have a generational curse. Generational curse. My family, their family is cursed. Oh, it's, it's been a generational poverty. It's cursed. And they will go to church and be praying. All this spirit of generational curse. There is nothing like that. That is life from the pit of hell. There is nothing like generational curse after Jesus. In the Old Testament, you could say, but there is nothing. God made it abundantly clear. That law was broken. That law was, that law was disregarded. I'm going to erupt this message up quoting the scripture and we will read it so you can understand that a lot of people because what you speak is what you start believing and when you start believing it you start manifesting and when it start manifesting it becomes a reality 
And that's what happens because a lot of people are living in a false reality, believing there is a generational curse because they, they, they felt they inherited poverty in their family. They felt, oh, because their father never had a child. Oh, the, the, marriage, the, 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 the father's, the parents' marriage didn't work well. So it means that theirs wouldn't work well. It's not going to work well because it's a generational problem. Oh, there is premature death in the family. Oh, because of that, it's a generational problem. It's come from the ancestors. It comes from... There is none. But because you said it, devil uses all the imitations to make it original before you. Because you have spoken it, because you are a God that you did not understand that you are. You are a demigod. So when you speak, it comes to pass. I wasn't born rich. You know, I wasn't. But I spoke to myself, said, I am going to achieve those things my parents couldn't achieve. Not because they didn't want to achieve it. No, but those limitations, I am going to surpass it. And my children will surpass mine. So I spoke life to myself. And I'm speaking to my own children. Hey, this thing, all my milestones, everything I have achieved, let it just be a stepping stone. Let it not be your desired goal. This is just nothing. I want you to surpass it. So stop believing. Stop thinking. You inherited poverty, so you are going to be poor. Or you inherited bad marriage because your parents were crack addicts. Your parents were drug addicts. You felt, oh, it runs in the family. We are all going to be cracks. We are all going to be addicts. We are all going to be useless. No. Possession is by confession. Remember, Mark eleven twenty-four, Mark chapter 11, 24. And remember this, that what you eat, what people say, when people say you will amount to nothing, it will not kill you. They have their right to say. They, everybody is entitled to their opinion, but it's your decision to receive what they said. They can say, they can tell you you amount to nothing, but you can use the success to cancel whatever insult they have given you. You can use, you, your determination is that thing that will, that will delete all the insults you have received. So it's what you speak about yourself. Now let's 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 read the Bible and see what the scripture says about about this. We, we, we're gonna read Ezekiel chapter 18, and I'm gonna read 17 to 20. Let's see what the Lord says about this generational nonsense. Because there is none, you know, but churches, you know, kind of we use it to deceive you and tell you, oh, let's pray the spirit of generational curse in your family. Pray, pray, pray. You see people praying, you pray in vain. You pray in vain. The Bible says people perish because they lack wisdom. They lack that knowledge of the word of God. And knowledge comes from God. Don't read the Bible as if you're reading it like a book. Read with inspiration. I've never prayed warfare prayer in my home. De how dare devil come to my home and, and, and act stupidly? I have a, a, a beautiful son, you know, with special needs. And uh, each time people see him and they want to pray. They want to pray for my son. And when he was born, everybody wants to pray. And I thinking, you know, he has a special needs. They want to pray. One day I told my wife, you know, one day we were praying. <clears throat> you know, I always have this quiet time with the Lord. And as I was praying, the Lord warned me. Don't let people pray for him again. I said, why? He said, all he needs is love. Let them love him. They should love on him and not pray for him. I did not give you a prayer topic. Kasakalubo. God said he did not give me a prayer topic. He gave me a son with a purpose. To fulfill that purpose. I said, then what is his purpose? And that's how we birthed. A non-profit organization called My Neighbor, My Hero. Lifting people out of poverty. Lifting people, a lot of children with his similar condition have been tagged witches in, in third world countries. We are telling their parents they are not witches, they are children with special needs, special blessings. We said they are not. These are children with special blessings. These are children with, 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 with a mission in this world. So please, do not regard them as witches because they are not witches. They are not. So my neighbor, my hero, would be able to, to grant scholarship to children in Africa, 
all over the world that contacted us. We've been able to grant them scholarship. We've been able to lift people, assist churches. We've been able to impact lives all because of him. Because that vision came through him. So now those of them always praying for him. Oh God, the moment I said stopped and showed him love, nobody, no, they were nowhere to be found. So <clears throat> when they wanted to pray, we let them pray. But when we spoke life into him, everybody left. Because they are so used to, oh, let us pray for this problem, this generation, this, 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 this. No, no, no. God says, I gave you a son with a purpose, not a prayer topic. Don't make your life a prayer topic. Make your life a life of testimony. Amen. Make it a life of testimony. So I, I felt the need to share this testimony before I, I, I wrap up this message because it's so important. And that, my son, is a symbol of joy, unity, peace in this home. Always happy. He just got back from school. Now we picked him, always smiling. Everybody loved him. You know, and one good thing, he's as handsome as his father. Don't let my wife hear this, but that's the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now let's get back to let's back let, get back to the deal. Ezekiel 18, <clears throat> 17 to 20. See what the Bible says. In verse 17, I'm reading from um, NIV. He withholds his hand from mistreating the poor and takes no interest or profit from them. He keeps my laws and follows my decrees. He will not die for his father's sin. He will surely live. But his father will die for his sin. Because he practiced extortion, robbed his brother, and did what was wrong among his people. Now see what God was saying. That he will not punish the children because of their father's sin. He said he will not die. He will not punish them because of their father's sin. Verse 19. Yet you ask, why does the son not share the guilt of his father? Since the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to keep all my decrees, he will surely leave. The Lord is speaking. He will not remember the, the child, the innocent child. He knew nothing about the iniquities of the father. He will not remember them with the sins of the father. Because the son had done what is good and cannot bear the guilt of the father. That's what God was speaking. In verse 20, <clears throat> the one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. This is the true word of God. So there is no generational case, and this is Old Testament prophet. So there is no generational curse. So when you start saying, when you confess it, that's when you possess it. That's when it impacts your life. Because you are living a righteous life, you didn't know what your parents did. You didn't know how your ancestors worshipped idols. You didn't know the promises they made to those idols. You didn't know how they shed human blood sacrificing to those idols. And how dare the idol you knew nothing about come after you for you to bear the iniquity the guilt of your forefathers. You never met them. You didn't even know your forefathers. All of a sudden, you are suffering the consequences, the guilt of your forefathers. This is not God. I told you, I'm writing a book. The misconception about Jesus, the misrepresentation about Jesus. Pastors have misrepresented Jesus and made him to be a liar. God does not change. God says yes in the Old Testament. He's still saying yes today. God said no in the Old Testament. He's still saying no today. So God changes not. Most of the things that were said, they were quoted out of context. The prophets say, God said, God told me. And Jesus came and said, I never said this. Moses never saw me. Moses spoke to the angels. The law wasn't given to Moses by me. It was given to him by the angel. Moses never received manna from heaven. It came, it fell from the sky. Jesus tried to correct the narrative, the impression, the misconception, the misapplication of facts without calling them liars. I can tell you that God said, I now can say God said, without God telling me, I can say God said, because at that moment I'm representing God, I can say God said. That's why I have to be careful things I said. Because whatever I said will come 
to fruition. So I have to be very careful when I quote God and when so I don't misapply things. So please stop confessing negatively over your life and start and start confessing positively. And remember, don't make a permanent decision in a seasonal problem when you're going through seasonal challenges. Please do not speak. Instead of you to utter words that you will regret. This is the message today. I don't know whom God is speaking to, but I just want you to know that God is still in that business of doing good. God bless you. I love you with all my heart, and I'll be praying for you. And let's share this word of God, and let this word of God go around and save lives. Not for me to go viral. I don't want to go viral, but let God, the righteous judge, move around and keep doing what he knows how to do best. The Bible says, as chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, delivering those that were oppressed by the devil. And one thing the Bible says, for God was with him. So the anointing made Jesus to do good. And today, because we are Christians, ambassadors of Christ, let us do good. Let us say no to hate. Let us spread love. Let the love of God go around and touch lives. Until I see you next time, God bless you. I love you.